Aloha, I'm Dory Frame, and this is the continuing journey of Alexander Reykjavik, a 13, yes, 13 year old Great Dane who navigated me for nine years through New York City, Key West, New Orleans, and Portland to finally retire in Hawaii when he turned 11. He started out as my guide dog. He has ended up as my spirit guide dog, helping me learn as much about my soul as he did about finding my way. From when he was a puppy on, I never returned from anywhere, be it from the other side of the country or the grocery store, that I didn't sprint into the house to greet him, so happy to be reunited. He makes my day every day, and I'm sure many of you pet people out there know exactly what I'm talking about. So there is not much I wouldn't do for him, but that goes both ways. He has been there for me every step of the way. So it's been my pleasure to return the favor and help facilitate his journey through degenerative myelopathy these past three years. This adventure has even included a new set of wheels, which he adapted to so quickly, just as he has everything else in his life. I too had to adapt, and I've learned so much along the way. I'd like to share some of those things that may help make it easier for you, if you ever come to this point with your pet. Don't get so downhearted Life is sunny and cloudy Round and around we go We got to go It's time to grow Do obstacles round and around we go Don't even worry about it Don't get so downhearted Life is sunny and cloudy Round and around we go Yeah, yeah This story kind of begins on my lawn out there when I was having a meltdown because I just needed help (laughs) and I got to that point very very slowly I was taking care of Reykjavik 150 pound Great Dane by myself and I did it past the time when I actually could do it I think the problem was compassion hasn't always been my strongest suit and especially compassion for myself. I expected to be able to do it and I wanted to do it for him. He's my joy boy, so important to me. I thought I should be doing all of his caretaking by myself. I finally realized just through sheer physical uh, breakdown and tiredness that I could no longer do it by myself. And when that happened, I sat there crying on the lawn thinking, how can I get out of this? At that point, I knew it was time for a change. And my options were to transition him, which I didn't feel good about at the time because he was so strong in spirit and wanting to be out and running around and healthy. Because he has degenerative myelopathy, the front part of him was fine. It was just that he was losing some feeling in his back legs. But he didn't feel like he should be going anywhere. So we decided that we would continue to facilitate. I should say I decided I would continue to facilitate his uh, activities day to day. So then I had to learn how to ask for help. And that was tricky for me because I'm usually the person that does everything and by myself. (laughs) So that was a great lesson for me to have some compassion for myself and realize One, I don't have to do everything perfectly, and two, I don't have to do everything. Uh, I'm very lucky we were able to have someone come live with us and help me every day. And I'm very grateful for her, Jessica. And between the two of us, we've enabled him to go on longer. And we've enabled him to stay here when he really wanted to stay here. And for that, I'm very grateful. We got some living to do. We got to go. It's time to grow. Do obstacles round and around. We go. Don't even worry about it. Don't get so down hearted. Life is sunny and cloudy. Round and around. Another really important piece. Really important. Not just as a caregiver, but in your life. Do your best and then be at peace with that. 
Don't keep thinking about how you could have done it differently or perfectly. When I was talking about compassion, I mentioned that I was able to get a uh, assistant to help me with Reykjavik. Not everyone can do that, and there's a lot of things that we do in this video that you might not be able to do or might not feel right for you. So at the end of the day, move forward by listening to the feeling in your heart, not the voices in your head, and they are constant. Listen to your heart. Don't listen to the people online, the people in videos, your next door neighbor telling you what you should be doing. You are the one who knows how to take care of your pet and your best friend. So listen to your heart. Just do your best. Giving up's not an option. So come on and climb this mountain with me. With all of your friends surrounding, we have found that life's worth the living again. You don't have to be afraid. In working with Reykjavik, I had this moment or dawning of another point that became super useful for us and it really became our mantra and that is path of least resistance. I started to realize I was observing Jessica and I and we're often holding out treats, urging him to go, go, go. We're trying to get him to a certain place to lay down or making him drink water so he doesn't get bladder infections. And all of that stuff is well-meaning and very good, but it's not necessary to force things like that. We started realizing he's not in rehab. We're not saving his life, we're extending his life. So it should flow more easily. So we backed off what we were doing and we tried to watch when we were getting ahead of ourselves and just trying to go from point A to point B. And a really good example of this is uh, we would take Reykjavik for acupuncture every two weeks. And looking back, now that we're towards the end of the journey, I realized the last two times we went were very much in struggle. And it ended up with four of us carrying him by his harness from the treatment room out the door and literally forcing him to go because he's scared of the floor because his legs are weak and he would slip on the linoleum. And I thought, why did I do that? And it was kind of like the frog in the pot of water. As you turn up the heat and it starts to boil, the frog is just so used to being in the water that he doesn't jump out. And that's kind of where I was. I was so used to doing the work that I didn't notice when the work got hard. I didn't notice when it became a struggle. So that is where my awareness kind of fell down. And it was only in hindsight that I realized that. Luckily, we became aware of this in time to be able to focus on it for the last couple of months. And it has made a big difference. It's made everything more easeful for us. Our new hashtag is more ease, please. You don't have to be afraid you're gonna fall apart. Sometimes life's a masterpiece, you paint it in the dark. And that's when you know how beautiful you are. When you smile through your scars, so we got to go. One of my favorite points to talk about that I have learned is love all the time. Everything you do should come out of love and how you feel in your heart. If it's a drudge that you dread every day, like for us carrying him to the car, feeding him by hand, trying to make him go pee, if that doesn't come from your heart, then you shouldn't be doing it. If you have to make the decision to transition at that point because it's just too taxing on you, that is fine. They are not gonna fault you for that. All you can do is what you can do out of love, or that's all that you should do. Try and keep it light. Focus on the things that are fun. There's kind of a general sense with people that this has to be a sad time, that we have to just focus on being sad. Why not just focus on the love? The love is more important. And when you become observant, you'll see the love is more true. Some of the things that happen just make me laugh. And 
it's okay to laugh. It's okay to have fun during this time. Why else be here? Why keep your pet here if you can't be light about it? We had a skateboard that we found at one of the parks that we go to. And Jessica and I each tried jumping on it and skating around and Reykjavik just went crazy, as dogs will do with the sound of a skateboard. And it was so fun because it got his adrenaline up. He wanted to play. He wanted to run after it. And <laughs> we tossed the skateboard onto the, onto the grass and he headed for it with his wheels, hopped over it with his front legs, and ran right over it with his back legs. <laughs> boom, boom, over the skateboard. And we couldn't stop laughing. And there's no reason not to. That's why he's here. That's why we're here. So we got to go. It's time to grow. Do obstacles round and around. Go. Don't even worry about it. Don't get so down hot. Life is sunny and cloudy. Round and around. Go. We got to go. The last point I've been learning is to let go. Not of your pet, but of the resistance to let them transition on to their next adventure. And I think it's important that you think of it that way, not as an ending, but as a transition for them. It's part of their journey and it's a circle of life. I could do a whole tearful video on my struggle to figure out when to let go. But at the end of the day, it was a feeling I felt in my heart, not something that I reasoned through and not even something that I consulted a vet on because I had a very strong feeling about it and my connection to Reykjavik is very strong. So I feel that together we reached an agreement. The funny part is I feel that neither of us were willing to say uncle. We're both very strong-willed and we both thought we could just keep carrying on indefinitely. But at the end of the day someone had to say and I feel pretty good about it. When it's time, it's time, and that's okay. Think about if you had a best friend that you saw every day and they were moving to another country. Would you be down and wallow in your own sadness? Or would you have joy for them and their impending adventure? Would you be willing to celebrate their leaving day so they could go off and have the time of their life somewhere else? It's a good question to ask yourself because this is your best friend. Don't bring them down when it's their time to transition. It'll feel best for both of you if you can figure out a way to go out on a high point, not in the emergency room or the saddest part of your journey. In our case, we've chosen to call his leaving day Freedom Day because now he gets to let go of his dense body that he's dragging around with his front legs. And he gets to run like the wind down the beach. And knowing that he will do that is the greatest gift of all. And it's why we took this journey together to get him to this point. We're both feeling good and he's going to feel great. You're gonna fall apart. Sometimes life's a masterpiece. You paint it in the dark. And that's when you know how beautiful you are. When you smile through your scars. So we got to go. It's time to grow. Through obstacles round and around. Go. Don't even worry. So it's been my pleasure to take Reykjavik on this journey. I could not have had a better partner. <laughs> I could not have had a more fun partner and a more willing, adventuresome partner. And I'd like to make a toast to the people who have helped me greatly. Number one, my husband, Greg, <laughs> who's the one who talked me into getting him in the first place and changed my life forever. I'd also like to toast Jessica and Naomi, my caregivers extraordinaire. And lastly, I'd like to toast Mr. Alexander Reykjavik. 
His greatest gift to me was teaching me how to open my heart and feel so deeply. My joy boy, may you run fast as the wind. my boy.